Hello and welcome back to part two of Miss Krupp Cracks Me Up. Chapter four, Wild Yak Attack. It was a candy machine. We want candy. We want candy. Everybody started chanting, we want candy. All the grown-ups came running over from wherever they were drinking coffee and talking about the weather. We're not here to eat candy, Mr. Docker told us. We're here to learn about dinosaurs and natural history. I could learn a lot more about dinosaurs and natural history if I had candy, I told him. No. Sheesh, what an old grouch. Mr. Docker probably knows a lot about dinosaurs because they were around when he was a kid. We were all grumbling about the candy when I suddenly noticed something out of the corner of my eye. It was even more amazing than a candy machine. It was a big, brown, hairy animal with horns and a hump on its back. It was standing very still right next to us. What's that? Neil the nude kid asked. I don't know, said Mrs. Daisy, who doesn't know anything. It was a wild yak, said Andrea, who knows everything. I learned about it in my encyclopedia. Yaks live in Tibet. That yak wasn't here a minute ago, said Michael. Maybe it just walked over, said Emily. It can't walk over, dumbhead, I said. It's dead. Emily looked like she was going to cry. That girl will cry over any old thing. Hey, I think that wild yak just moved, said Neil the nude kid. It didn't move, I told him. It's stuffed, just like the bear. But just then, the yak let out a weird yak sound. Ah! yelled the boys. Eek! yelled all the girls. I thought I was going to die. Everybody was freaking out. That's when the wild yak threw off its wild yak fur. And do you know what was underneath? A lady. She had glasses, dark hair, and a pointy nose. On her belt were a walkie-talkie and a flashlight. You must be the students from elementary school, said the lady. My name is Miss Krupp. I'll be your tour guide this evening. I almost peed my pants, said Ryan. Sorry I scared you, Miss Krupp said. I'm just so excited that you came to spend the evening with me in the museum. We're going to have so much fun. Why are you wearing wild, a wild yak fur, asked Andrea. Well, the wild yak wasn't using it anymore, said Miss Krupp. So I thought I would. That Miss Krupp lady is weird. Suddenly, the lights dimmed. The museum is now closed, somebody announced. It was a little scary in the dark. Miss Krupp turned on her flashlight. We all gathered around her. The museum is a magical place at night, she whispered. And she gave each of us a name tag. I'm going to take you on a journey. We're going to encounter some amazing creatures and some incredible things. If you listen carefully... You can almost hear the sounds of the jungle, the forest, the desert, the mountains, and the ocean. I don't hear anything, I said. She said almost, dumbhead, Andrea told me. Well, either you hear something or you don't, I said. You can't almost hear something. I wish I didn't hear you, Arlo. I was going to say something mean to Andrea, but I didn't get the chance because a loud bleep came out of Miss Krupp's walkie-talkie. We all jumped. Miss Krupp, a voice said. Tyrannosaurus Rex is missing. I'm on it, Chief, said Miss Krupp. Kids, you've got to find we've got to find Rexy. Are you ready to go on an adventure? Yes, said all the girls. Can we kill it? asked all the boys. It's already dead, Arlo, said Andrea, rolling her eyes. Tyrannosaurus Rex has been extinct for sixty million years. Your face stinks. I bet Miss Krupp was yanking our chain about that missing T-Rex. Dead stuff can't run away. She was just trying to make the boring museum seem interesting. Follow me, she said. Chapter 5. The Scary Dead Zombie Buffalo Miss Krupp took a bunch of flashlights out of a box and gave one to each of us. Then we went off to search for the missing T-Rex. Everybody was whispering and slinking around like secret agents. It was cool. Me and the guys pointed our flashlights up from our chins and made scary faces at the girls. 
The first floor of the museum is where we keep most of our dioramas, said Miss Krupp. I had diorama once, I told her. My mom gave me some yucky pink medicine, and it went away. That's diarrhea, dumbhead, Andrea said. You had diarrhea. So does your face, I said. Those diorama things were cool. Each one was a little room with animal statues and, a c and scenery behind glass. We saw pandas, gorillas, monkeys, beavers, reindeer, bighorn sheep, polar bears, and a moose. The sign next to the moose said it weighs a half a ton and eats 20,000 leaves a day. That thing should definitely go to Weight Watchers. But next to the moose was a buffalo, and it was even bigger. We pressed our noses against the glass so we could see it better. It looks so real, Andrea said. It is real, Miss Krupp told us. These animals aren't statues. They're the real thing. That means they're dead, asked Michael. That's right, said Miss Krupp. Just then, I thought I heard scary music playing in the background. It was like a movie I saw once. Somebody said the word dead and scary music started playing. I'm scared said Emily. If that thing was a zombie buffalo, I whispered, it could, go it could jump out at us, and then we'd become zombies too. My uncle lives in Buffalo, said Neil the nude kid. Your uncle lives in a buffalo? I asked. Why doesn't he live in a house like a normal person? It's Buffalo, New York, said Andrea. I knew that, I lied. It would be weird to live in a buffalo. I know a song about buffaloes, Emily said. Would you like to sing it for us? said Miss Krupp. Emily nodded and began to sing. Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam, where the deer and the cantaloupe play. Well, everybody just about died laughing. I slapped my head. It's not cantaloupe, dumbhead, I told Emily. It's antelope. Cantaloupes can't play. They're melons. Emily started crying, of course. What a crybaby. I bet she would have run away, too. If it weren't for scary dead animals all over the place. Miss Krupp made us tell Emily we were sorry. Next to the buffalo was another diorama with some skunks and an opossum in it. These are nocturnal animals, Miss Krupp told us. Does anybody know what nocturnal means? Needless to say, Miss Smarty Pants know-it-all was waving her hand in the air. Nocturnal animals sleep during the day and come out at night, Andrea said, all proud of herself. Why doesn't a nocturnal animal fall on her head? I hate her. That's right, Andrea, said Miss Krupp. Some people claim that our nocturnal friends walk around the museum in the middle of the night. That's scary, Emily said. It is not. That girl thinks everything is scary. Miss Krupp showed us the rest of the dioramas on the first floor but we never found the missing T-Rex. What's in that room, Miss Krupp? Andrea asked when we passed a door next to the stairs. Oh, that's a secret room, Miss Krupp replied. Ooh, what's in the secret room, we all asked. If I told you, then it wouldn't be secret. Please, 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 please. Anytime a grown-up won't tell you something, just say please until they can't stand it anymore. That's the first rule of being a kid. Hmm, said Miss Krupp finally. Are you boys and girls really good at keeping secrets? Yes, we all shouted. Well, said Miss Krupp, so am I. And she started climbing up the stairs to the second floor. Bummer in the summer. Chapter 6, The Hall of Dinosaurs. There were about a million hundred stairs to climb. But when I got to the top, I saw the most amazing thing in the history of the world. No, it wasn't another candy machine. It was the missing Tyrannosaurus Rex. Aha, said Miss Grupp. There he is. Rexy, you are a naughty boy. Wow, we all said, which is mom upside down. Rexy was amazing, Miss Grupp told us. The Tyrannosaurus Rex means Tyrant Lizard King. She also told us that Rexy is 20 feet tall but his arms are shorter than ours, and he only has two fingers on each hand. Look at his teeth, said Ryan. They could crunch through bone, Miss Krupp told us. 
That thing would bite your head off in a minute, I said. Hey, Ryan said, if T-Rex and Giganotosaurus got into a fight, who do you think would win? Giganotosaurus would kick T-Rex's butt, said Michael. No way, said Neil. T-Rex would kick Giganotosaurus's butt. Neither of you is right, Miss Krupp said. These two meat eaters would never fight. They lived millions of years apart. I still say T-Rex would kick his butt, said Neil the nude kid. There was a model. T there was a model T-Rex skull that we could look at close up. I put my head in its mouth, and Ryan took a picture with his camera. It was a real Kodak moment. Then, all the other copycats put their head in T-Rex's mouth for the fun of it. Well, except for Emily, who was too scared. The room was called the Hall of Dinosaurs. We got to see a Stegosaurus and a Triceratops and some other dinosaurs too. We, all, we learned all kinds of cool stuff. Did you know that some dinosaurs swallowed rocks to break up the food in their stomachs? Yuck! We saw real dinosaur eggs and footprints too. Miss Krupp showed us how to make fossil rubbings that we could take home. She let us hunt for dinosaur bones in a big sandbox, but I didn't find any. Then she gave us dinosaur-shaped graham crackers for a snack. Dinosaurs are the coolest animals in the history of the world, I told everybody. And we got to see them dead and in person. Kids can learn a lot from dead animals, Miss Krupp said. But we also have live animals at the museum. Live animals? And the Emily said, looking all scared. Sure, said Miss Krupp. Follow me! Chapter 7. It's alive! Miss Krupp led us to a room with a sign over the door that said, It's alive! We went inside and saw lots of animals in cages. Snakes, tortoises, South American poison dart frogs, and a blue-tongued skink. They were awesome. These animal friends help us teach of... Teach people about conservation and the environment, Miss Krupp told us. They also help us learn to respect wildlife. Miss Krupp led us into another room that was really cool because there were butterflies all over the place. Look, a giant snow tail, Miss Krupp said. And there's a California dog face. We have 30 different species. In here, the butterflies are free. Great, I said. I'll take 10 of them. That means they're free to fly wherever they want, Arlo, said Andrea, rolling her eyes. I knew that, I lied. Bummer. I thought they were giving butterflies away. Next, Miss Krupp took us to the creepy critter's room. She was all excited, running from cage to cage to tell us about the giant desert hairy scorpion, the funnel web spider, the velvet ant, and the Mexican red knee tarantula. They were gross, but cool. I kept an eye on Mr. Docker to see if he was going to eat any of the bugs. 80% of the Earth's living creatures are insects, Miss Krupp told us. So you're in good company, Arlo, Andrea said. I was going to say something mean back to Andrea, but I didn't get the chance because Miss Krupp pulled this disgusting brown thing with wings out of a cage and held it up for us to see. It was about four inches long. This is General Muffin, she said. He's a very rare hissing cockroach from Madagascar. Wow, we all said, which is mom upside down. Miss Krupp told us that most cockroaches have 18 knees and they can live for a week after their head is cut off. What do they eat? asked Emily. They eat girls named Emily, I said, and everybody laughed. Well, except for Emily. Cockroaches will eat almost anything, Miss Krupp said. General Muffin even likes to eat candy. Why is he called a hissing cockroach? asked Andrea, who has to know everything. Because General Muffin can hiss by pushing air through a hole in his tummy, said Miss Krupp. Make him hiss, we all chanted. Make him hiss. The General only hisses when he's disturbed, said Miss Krupp. But he's so used to being handled that, we hardly ev that he hardly ever hisses. Would anyone like to hold General Muffin? No way, we all shouted. Psst, AJ, Michael whispered. I dare you to hold the cockroach. Forget it, I said. I'm not touching that thing. AJ, if you don't hold the cockroach, it means you love Andrea. What? 
I said. I didn't see what holding a cockroach had to do with Andrea, except that they were both gross. I sure didn't want to hold a disgusting cockroach, but I didn't want anybody to think I loved Andrea either. I was faced with the hardest decision of my life. If I didn't hold the cockroach, the guys would think I loved Andrea. But if I held the cockroach, then, well, I would have to hold a disgusting cockroach. I couldn't decide what to do. I thought so hard that my brain hurt. I'll hold it, I finally said. Everybody cheered. Miss Krupp told me to put my palm out flat. Then, she placed General Muffin on it. Ew, yuck. There was a giant hissing cockroach sitting on my hand. I thought I was going to throw up. And that's when the most amazing thing in the history of the world happened. General Muffin jumped out of my hand. Chapter 8. We have a problem. Eek! He's getting away! Run for your lives, said Neil the nude kid. After General Muffin jumped off my hand, he ran under a table, so we lost sight of him. Everybody was yelling and screaming and freaking out. You should have been there. Now look what you've done, Arlo, shouted Andrea. I didn't do anything, I shouted back at her. Miss Krupp pulled out her walkie-talkie. Chief, we have a problem, she shouted. General Muffin is missing. General Muffin is hissing? A voice replied. So what? Not hissing, Miss Krupp said. Missing. We all hid in the corner while Miss Krupp searched for General Muffin on her hands and knees. She couldn't find him anywhere. I don't like this place, Emily whimpered. I want to go home. For once, I agreed with her. I didn't want a, hiss a missing hissing cockroach crawling up my leg. The grown-ups led us down the hall into the auditorium. You'll be safe in here, Ryan mom, Ryan's mom told us. They're going to show you a video. We'll find General Muffin. We watched a movie called Our Reptile Friends. We learned a lot of stuff about reptiles, like snakes can still hear even though they don't have ears. So be careful what you say around snakes. The video was pretty cool, but I still want, don't want to make friends with any reptiles. I was getting tired. Some of the kids fell asleep in the middle of the video. When it was over, the grown-ups came back to get us. Did you catch General Muffin? We all asked. He's in a safe place, Miss Krupp said. Whew. That was a relief. There was no way I would be able to sleep, knowing a giant hissing cockroach from Madagascar was running around. Miss Krupp and the other grown-ups walked us back down to the first floor. Our sleeping bags were spread out under Giganotosaurus, right next to the giant bear. It was going to be cool to sleep next to a bear and under a dinosaur, and the best part was that we didn't have to brush our teeth. The grown-ups drank some coffee and talked about the weather for a few minutes. Then they climbed into their sleeping bags too. Good night everyone, said Miss Krupp. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, we all said. I'm scared, said that crybaby Emily. Don't worry, Ryan's mom said. Giganotosaurus will protect you. I don't see how something that died 95 million years ago was going to protect anybody. But that was Emily's problem. I climbed into my Batman sleeping bag on the floor. The floor was hard and cold. I started thinking about Batman. I wondered if the opposite of Batman is Man-Bat or Nam-Tab, or maybe the opposite of Batman is not Batman. I couldn't fall asleep. It was creepy looking up at the Giganotosaurus in the dark. So I thought about cool dead and live animals we, seen, we had seen. I thought about the secret room and wondered what was in it. Psst, Ryan, I whispered. Ryan didn't answer. He was asleep. Everybody was quiet. You could hear a pin drop in the museum. I think I was the only one who was still awake. That's when I heard it. A horrible noise. It was some kind of monster. And it was right near me. It sounded like a giant nocturnal meat eater. And it was about to eat me alive. Okay, well, you're going to have to tune in next time to see about the nocturnal meat eater. Anyways, I hope you're enjoying the story. And next time, I will finish the story. So, that's it. Bye.